I'm reading up there. Good morning. Welcome to morning prayer. Sorry for the slight uh, dishevelledness this morning. I have wet hair. Apologies for that. Uh, well, if I had stopped to dry it, I would not be on at the right time. So you've got me with wet hair this morning. We are on Wednesday, the 16th of February, and I uh, don't think I am getting my gardeners this morning. So we will be able to uh, name our children and young people and those who are teachers, who are part of our community and part of the church family and of the wider family of the church. And so we will be praying for them and ourselves but please 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 wait until i ask for named people otherwise i may miss your loved ones to be added in as people start coming on morning good morning oh and millie no chris okay so morning caroline and millie welcome to morning prayer hopefully i'll see a few other names come up as time gets on and people are able to join i've got really need to tidy my desk again it's that point where everything's overflowing that's the one i was looking for so yes welcome Roz. welcome to morning prayer nice to see you i'm just going to sip water and wait for people to come on it's wednesday 16th of february there are no saints or commemorations going on this morning so it's a straightforward morning prayer good morning bill and sheila and they say good morning to everyone we don't have any saints this morning, so I'll put that book over to one side. Morning, Pat and Ray. Morning, Kate. Thank you for your help, Pat and Ray, on Monday. It, the funeral went smoothly, and that is a lot down to your work and effort, so thank you. Good morning, Kate. How are you? Hopefully you are not, uh, hopefully you're okay. Um, do please feel free to send me an update on you and your mum and how things are for you. Um, we'll just let a few more come on. It is one of those mornings where it goes a bit quieter, I think, on morning prayer. So as it is five minutes past, I will just... Um, light our candle in the moment and we'll get going the unpredictability of morning prayer and who will join us you're aching all over two other helpers oh two more okay I am aware of one I did test yesterday and I was clear yesterday, though I have been aching and I put that down to my fibromyalgia. So I might take a test this morning and just see where we are with that. That means that the uh, team service may be a bit interesting. Uh, Yep, morning, Pat and Ray. Let's just take a moment in prayer, quietly before God, for ourselves. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Morning, Christine. Is Ronaldo with us this morning? I'm just checking the psalm. It's Psalm 119. Those of you that know that particular psalm will know it's a long one. We are doing verses 57 to 80. So it's Psalm 119, verses 57 to 80. You only are my portion, O Lord. I have promised to keep your words. I entreat you with all my heart. Be merciful to me according to your promise. I have considered my ways 
and turned my feet back to your testimonies. I made haste and did not delay to keep your commandments. Though the cords of the wicked entangle me, I do not forget your law. At midnight I will rise and get to give you thanks because of your righteous judgments. I am a companion of all those who fear you, those who keep your commandments. The earth, O Lord, is full of your faithful love. Instruct me in your statutes. You have dealt graciously with your servant according to your word, O Lord. O teach me true understanding and knowledge, for I have entrusted your commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I keep your word. You are gracious and do good, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. The proud have smeared me with lies, but I will keep your commandments with my whole heart. Their heart has become gross with fat, but my delight is in your law. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I may learn your statutes. The law of your mouth is dearer to me than a, word, than a hoard of gold and silver. Your hands have made and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn your commandments. Those who fear you will be glad when they see me, because I have hoped in your word. I know, O Lord, that your judgments are right, and that in very, and that in very faithfulness you have caused me to be troubled. Let your faithful love be my comfort, according to your promise to your servant. Let your tender mercies come to me that I may live, for your law is my delight. Let the proud be put to shame, for they wrong me with lies. But I will meditate on your commandments. Let those who fear you turn to me, even those who know your testimonies. Let my heart be sound in your statutes that I may not be put to shame. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. I see we've got some comments. There are a lot of large aeroplanes flying into Fairfoot and Blaise Norton at the moment. Last time was the Afghan war. Uh, oh, no. Uh, that's... Uh, Ominous, Roz. And Christine says, good morning. And, oh, sorry, late, couldn't find you this morning. Yes, Ronaldo is with us. Welcome, Ronaldo. Yeah, sometimes this is why I leave uh, what I think is a is a reasonable gap, obviously. Um, we have to press on at some point so that people can sort of join and find us. There are ways and means you can try options. If you like the page and follow our our Stratton Team Ministry page on Facebook, you should get an up uh, uh, a, a sort of um, notice that comes up that you can press a link and you can go into it. But that often is um, it, that often is the um, is is more delayed than perhaps going straight to the page and just refreshing, just pulling down uh, on on the on the screen and that kind of refreshes the page um there are ways and means good morning mary yes uh well we have been praying yes for for the uh hostilities between russia and ukraine and we will continue to do that was yes okay so let's move on if you would like to read for yourselves the old testament reading it is genesis chapter 7 no, it isn't. <laughs> I'll start that again. It's Genesis chapter 25, beginning at verse 7 to verse 11. And then a gap before you go, uh, and then 19 to the end. So there's a gap. So verse uh, chapter 25, verse is 7 to 11, and then 19 to the end. Morning, Pat. Morning, Mary. More, yes. 
Right, okay, so please do have a little read of that if you would like. We are going to go, we're still in to Timothy. Timothy's letter, well, no, actually, we've moved on from Timothy's first letter to his second one now. We're in 2 Timothy, chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus, by the will of God, for the sake of the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God our, the Father, and, Je and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to you, whom I worship with... I'm... <laughs> I'll start this again. I wonder if I've got a migraine on its way. I'm struggling to read clearly for some reason this morning. Good morning, Pearl. Let's start that again. I am grateful to God, whom I worship, with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did, when I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Do not be ashamed then of the testimony about our Lord or me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God, who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began. But it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Saviour Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. For this gospel I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher, and for this reason I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed, for I know the one in whom I have put my trust, and I am sure that he is able to guard until that day what I have entrusted to him. Hold to the standard of sound teaching that you have heard from me, in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. God, the good treasure entrusted to you with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us. Here ends the reading. Got a lot of things whirling through my head at the moment. I quite like this passage and I may use it at some point in the future for um, one of our team services. Faith in God above talent and ability is the most important thing when we look for leaders in Christ, those that are set aside. And this is where Paul is affirming Timothy. He's clearly been challenged on his authority. He is struggling. There's tears, um, whether they're metaphorical or, um, or not. Clearly, it's causing him a great deal of distress, what's going on in the churches that he is attempting to be leader of. And Paul is writing here to encourage Timothy and also to um, address some of the challenges that may be going on. But I do like that. God who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. When you look for your leaders, when you look at leaders, when we look at Christian leaders, there is deep discernment that goes on before I become your incumbent. Uh, that goes right back to the very beginnings when I first feel that I am called and I speak to my priest and then I get referred on if they feel that there is a sense. And then begins a very long and rigorous process, as is quite right. We then come to other leaders within the church, like our church wardens and many others, who are appointed by the church, who, again, are asked to be discerning 
of whether Christ is the most important thing in the lives of our leaders. Commitment, dedication, faith. There are many, uh, there's a few um, verses talking about leadership, bishops, deacons, and those are the ones that we apply when we look as well as talent for talent and ability. But above all, the faith in, in and in good leadership and integrity and commitment are important. So here we really see that Paul is setting Timothy's authority in the grand scheme of God's calling rather than saying, you're a good preacher, you're a good leader, you're a gifted um, writer, you're gifted in administration. He doesn't say any of these things. He says about the calling according to God's purpose and grace. And sometimes, dare I say it, it may feel obscure. If we look back up to the psalm, again, there's something going on here where we see there's an integrity of commitment to the calling. And when I went astray, but I now I keep your word. just looking to see I have considered my ways and turned my feet back to your testimonies just because we select our leaders and believe them to be full of faith and integrity doesn't mean to say they don't mess up occasionally we're all human and we um, struggle with frail the human frailties that is humanity that means that we make mistakes we sometimes behave wrongly it's that willingness to turn back and become under the authority of God and the church with, with which we serve that makes the difference and I suppose I speak into situations that are going on in our secular leaders and in other situations where just the word of saying sorry seems to be enough for you to be able to carry on and not have any consequences. And I don't believe that's right. I think there needs to be a sense of repentance and that's the turning around. The, the word repentance is a turning back into the opposite direction of the path of away from God that you are traveling. And so I struggle with a sorry that I don't believe has the integrity behind it or that appears to be more about the person being sorry having been caught out rather than actually being convicted in heart and spirit um, and I've come across that in my role as as, as Christian leader uh, and as a Christian in circles and so just because somebody has giftings and um, works, it is God's own purpose and grace by which we should judge their standards and their calling. I'm going to stop there before I go any further because there may be a little, a little sermonette going on coming up on that one. Or indeed a running thread throughout my sermons for a while. Let's move on to the responses. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. For I am always with you. Your right, you hold me by my right hand and afterwards receive me with glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning. Uh, 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 uh. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. Sometimes, sometimes we just, um, it's such an automatic response to go. It's hard to sometimes go out, get out of that 
The Benedictus, the song of Zechariah. You show mercy to our ancestors and remember your holy covenant. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. A new child shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. You show mercy to our ancestors, and remember your holy covenant. Let's move on now to our prayers. And as Ros has quite rightly pointed out, there's uh, a lot of uh, activity going on in our military at the moment for whatever reasons and certainly over at Bry's. Um, preparations are being made in, in what might be uh, happening this week. If there are any other prayer requests, then please, now is the time to uh, uh, put them in. And we will uh, have a look at I just need to make notes to myself. Um, we will uh, have a look at those and pray for anyone who needs to come on or off the prayer list. So let us continue in our prayers this morning by in you through our intercessions. Loving God, we do lift to you our world and all life within it. We pray that we would all be better stewards of this planet, that those who have the power and authority are able to make decisions that protect our planet rather than exploit it. We pray for a greater working together of our world leaders in all aspects of their leadership. Lord, we've seen in the psalm this morning and in Paul's letter to Timothy what leadership should look like. However, we know that in worldly humanity and in our frailty, mistakes are often made. We pray for our world leaders that you would surround them with wise counsellors that are there to support and help make good decisions that are based on justice, mercy and fairness and not on greed and self-interest and power. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the people of Ukraine and for their families around the world who may be watching the situation going on with great fear and anxiety. We pray that you would protect the people of, the, of Ukraine from the ongoing hostilities from Russia. We pray for innocent lives that are caught up in the stress and strains of what is happening. We pray that hostilities would cease and that there would be a sensible way out for Putin to remove his troops without his loss of face that he values so highly. We pray for world leaders who are gathering in order to help ease the tensions and situation. We pray their decisions would be wise, that the peacemakers would be listened to and heeded, that there would be a way forward, that we mean no war or fighting would be declared. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those troops in the military on all sides who follow the orders of their leaders, risking their lives as part of their calling into the military. We pray for their families. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we do pray for all places and situations where there is war and fighting over territory, land. And pray that for those who are innocent, caught up in these conflicts, for those who are displaced as a result of these wars, for those ethnic peoples who are pushed out from their land, for those who are persecuted because of their faith, their gender, their ethnic, their, their ethnicity, or for their political standing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those that are suffering from economic, for the economic downturn around our world. Those whose livelihoods, jobs, homes are in jeopardy. Those who have already lost these things. We know there are, around the world, there are rising, the rising cost of living is pushing more and more people into poverty. We know that in this country, the uh, food banks and other places are expecting more and more people to, to access their services. We pray for all who will struggle to heat their homes, to put food on the table, to even travel to and from work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those uh, sectors that have been affected badly uh, due to the economic crisis going on as a result of COVID or as a result of the restrictions. We pray for those in the hospitality and entertainment industry and many other small quiet businesses that have struggled. We pray for all those who work in those sectors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our services in this country, for our police, our fire brigade, First responders for hospitals, those who are ambulance workers. For the key workers that we once clapped for but now ignore again. For those who empty our bins. For those who stack our shelves in supermarkets. For those who clean the roads. And so many other unnoticed services that go on, that allow us to continue our lives unaffected and blissfully ignorant of what goes on around us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the education system around our world and for all those teachers and those who work in education. difficult circumstances in so many countries as a result of this pandemic. We particularly lift to you our teachers here in this country who will be preparing students for tests and exams, who continue to work to try and fill the gaps that uh, absence from school has caused. 
by this pandemic. We give thanks for their dedication, for their work over this pandemic, their continued dedication to their students and young people and the extra mile that many of them go without even being uh, given the credit for. We pray for their mental and physical health. We lift you, Noel, Lisa, Nick, Gareth, Susan, Hannah, Michael, Sue, Joshua, Chris, Rebecca, Asher, Matthew, Sarah, Heather, Marie and Michael, their colleagues and co-workers that work in the education system, from administrator to cleaner. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our children and young people. We pray for their mental and physical welfare and for their faith. We pray that those who have faith will have that strengthened and encouraged and that many more of our young people will come to know you as their personal Lord and Saviour. We pray for Joel, for Talitha, for Grace, Emily, Lexi, Lily, Jacob, Jake, Ella, Oscar, Kerry, Anton, Callum, Phoebe, Ellie, Travis, Nathan, Ruby, Noah, Evie, Charlie, Jack, Mia, Luca, Joden, Ethan, Aidan and Amalia. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are unwell at this time, mentally, physically or spiritually. We pray that you would bring healing. We lift to you Addie and her family, William and his family, Linda, Wendy and the family, John, Jim, Joe and the family, John, Liz, Dave and the family, Daniel, Peter, Mary, Martina and her children, Troudel, Martin, Jeff and Hilary, Esme, Peter and Bridget, Greg, Stephanie and the family, Anne, Angela, Ali and Mia, Christine, George, Jenny, Averill, Barry, Morgan, Miles' family and his wife June, Darren and Leah, Rose, Angela's dog Charlie and Elle. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who work in leadership in our churches. We give thanks for those who work in Saturday scene and pray for those that have tested positive. Be uh, Saturday scene as a result of that or the uh, site of that contact, or not. We give thanks for all our leaders who step up, who give, co who give dedication and commitment to roles within our churches. We pray that those who have been infected by COVID, that their symptoms would be mild and that they would be able to return back into, out of isolation, at the earliest possible time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We do pray, Lord, for all who are affected by the coronavirus around our world through illness, isolation or economically. We pray that they would find relief and recovery. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are guiding our nation at this time we pray that their decisions would be wise, 
that you would aid them in negotiations with Russia, where you would aid them with negotiations in trade policies, and that the decisions they make for the good of this country would be for the good of all and not for those who are in the most powerful positions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for doctors and nurses around our world, working in difficult circumstances, often long hours, without the adequate medicines and equipment that they need. We pray for their strength, their health and their courage. And we give thanks for their dedication. We pray for medical researchers that continue to look into medicines and vaccines that eradicate illness around our world and that this research would still receive funding and continue to go on. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our own NHS that it would continue to receive funding, be supported and grown in order for all to receive treatment at the point of need. We pray for those on waiting lists for treatment or diagnosis or operations. We pray that the delays would be short, that the lists would be addressed and made shorter and that no one would suffer unduly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the vulnerable and for the fearful and for those who are gravely ill and dying around our world. We pray that wherever they are, they would know your comfort and peace. We pray for their families and loved ones, that they would know your touch with them, that your presence would comfort them in these sad times. And we pray for all who have been bereaved however long ago that may have been. We pray for their ongoing healing as th through their grief. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of our God. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. our collect for today. Almighty God, who alone can bring order to the unruly wills and passions of sinful humanity, give your people grace, so to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the many changes of this world, our hearts may be surely there fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning, Janet. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining with me for morning prayer this morning. Sorry, morning prayer was cut short yesterday with the uh, gardeners knocking on my door. Um, and you're having to finish up a little bit on your own uh, less stressed and your garden is looking great well it's kind of kind of looking different great I'm not sure is a, is a bit stretching the uh, imagination there uh, Christine but thank you thank you Pearl thank you Caroline do please uh, join those in person who will meet for morning prayer on tomorrow uh, there's always the tea and coffee afterwards for the coffee morning that you can enjoy. That starts at nine o'clock. Please do go for uh, join them. Um, 
I will be back on Monday with morning prayer on Facebook. Uh, do use the app or, as I say, or go in person to our Thursday morning uh, prayer. Um, I think that's it for um, announcements. But until I see you again, the blessing of our Lord Jesus, uh, of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and those whom you love today and always. Amen. Stay safe, stay healthy, everyone. And I forgot to pray for the storms coming. So we'll just do that a moment if anyone is still on with me. Loving God, we just lift to you our country and other countries affected by these storms that are coming in. One expected today and one on Friday, Lord. We pray for all those homes that were already affected by the storms uh, not so long ago. Those who had no electric for many days. Lord, we pray that these storms would not uh, cause any loss of life or damage to property, homes. But we pray that all would be protected. We give thanks for those who may be the responder units that will go in to help those as a result of the storms, particularly the fire brigade and, so, and perhaps ambulance crews. And so we pray for them too. Keep us all safe, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Amen. See you all soon.